Of course the battery's dying. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Dalton, what the hell are you gonna do with this huge thing? I actually don't know. I picked it up from my old garage. We're gonna need it eventually, probably, who knows? And nope, I'm not gonna bring a knife to a gunfight. I'll just bring this thing. I don't think they made this thing heavy enough. the original seats of the gator. Now they have been probably around the farm and the dog may have got to the seats a few times, but uh, I don't know if they put gold in this thing or what, but this has to be about 60 pounds worth of seat, man. As comfy as these may look, I got, I got, uh, I got new ones. This is hilarious, I'm just noticing this. The driver, th this is prejudice at its finest. The driver has all this adjustment. The passenger, not so much. You're kind of stuck with what you got. One, Dalton, why are you working like a caveman? Why do you have this and why don't you have like an ugga dugga gun? Well, I don't have my air compressor here yet, so I'm, I gotta work like a caveman. And two, yes, the Gator is also going to have favorites when it comes to the driver, because I am the driver. There's that car on there. Okay, our original Bart is now seatless. Now I'm not looking to reinvent the wheel. I'm looking to see what John Deere did and how we can improve that. I do have to say, I do like these bars. That right there, <coughs> that right there, that's a high quality holy handle. John Deere did something like that. It looks like this, this back portion of the seat assembly actually used to go right in line where our spark plugs are, maybe even back a little bit more. So we can't have this as all one piece anymore. We're gonna have to cut it into two. Now one thing that I find really interesting is John Deere only made one of these pieces. You can see that these are the same exact piece, but they didn't have to have that hole there because that, uh, that bar's under there. It's just kind of neat to understand that it was more cost effective to put that hole in there than to leave that hole out of there. Maybe that just makes me weird because I noticed that. I'm sure you can imagine this, and I'm sure you can comprehend this, but this thing is going to be one hell of a uh, fast, crazy, different, and wacky machine. So we need, we don't need just one holy handle for each driver or passenger, we probably need two, so, I mean, you got two hands. So that's, that's what we're gonna make happen. There's our first one. Second one usually is on the dash somewhere. The reason I'm bringing this up, we have to modify this holy handle. Holy handle number one. This seat just doesn't line up with it. I mean, from this distance, it looks like it'll line up, but no, it, it won't. We're gonna have to use that guy. Followed by that big dude. say seat number one passenger side is installed. See I'm not picking favorites over the driver's side, I did the passenger side first. That's because uh, I wanted to learn a little bit so that we can dial in the driver's side even better. I'm sorry passenger, 
but I, I want to be comfortable when I drive this thing and rip up the trails. Plus, I can dial it even further after I weld everything up. The beat. Unlike this one time where my cousin took me on his, his he had this like off-road mail car or something. This was way back when I was like three or four years old. He had this thing where it just backfired like crazy and I was young and I didn't understand, you know, loud stuff was cool back then. So I wanted out. Well, unlike that, I want to stay seated and planted on this thing. That experience scared the shit out of me. He always reminds me every time he comes up here. He's from North Carolina, but every time he comes up here to New York, he always reminds me. So we've done some modifications here. We've got this piece of steel laid. We have this piece of steel for support. And then we have this for engine support. And my seat sits about two inches further back than the passenger side. Sorry, passenger. And don't forget about the adjustment. Front piece off. So far I've gone through three different tools, this being my third. Okay, Dalton, I like where you're going with this. You took the shroud off so you can keep your feet nice and cool. No, not that, but I do appreciate that you like where I'm going with this. I took the shroud off because I have to put a radiator in here. Preferably this one because it's small, it has a fan, and I believe this thing's a pump. I don't think we need a pump, but extra pumpage, you can't go wrong with extra pumpage. Extra pumpage! There's this nice little cavity right here. However, we can't mount it to this face because this face, as you can see, moves with the wheel. We can't have a radiator that moves with the wheel. So saying that, I gotta somehow, I gotta remove this plastic, I guess, build some sort of frame, but at the same time, make sure that when we do swing this far to the right, or far to the left, when we're ripping the hell out of it, that our radiator doesn't get compromised, or our strength of our, you know, so we don't, we don't want holes in this thing.
Check this out, these guys must have hashed like just a few minutes ago or something or I'm not paying attention. But look at all of these spiders. I'm not much of a spider guy so I'm taking this whole thing outside. The spiders are set free, the radiator is installed and mounted, the foundation is almost done, then we can start spicing this thing up. I'll see you guys next Tuesday. Stay froggy fresh and stay super fly. 3D Machines out. Water.